Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. The focus in this video is on explaining the difference between non-AI, AI, and AIS Nikon lenses. This video is in response to a question from Robert T, who asked this question in the comments section of my Ask a Question, Win a Camera, and 58mm 1.4 lens video. There is a link to this video in the comments below. Just ask a question in the comments section of that video, must be in that video, for a chance to win a used Minolta SRT 101 and a 58mm 1.4 lens. The contest ends September 30th, 2021. Okay, so to answer Robert's question, non-AI, also known as pre-AI lenses, are Nikon F-mount lenses made prior to 1977. Before AI lenses were introduced, they were known simply as Nikon F-mount lenses. They were first introduced in 1959 with the Nikon F camera. Now, most Nikon F-mount lenses had coupling prongs. Right? You could see it here. And here's maybe a better view on this 105 lens. Okay, that is the coupling prong. The coupling prong enabled the lens to couple to a coupling pin on the Nikon F meter prisms, as well as Nikromats with built-in meters, and several models of the Nikon F2 meter prisms. Sometimes you'll hear these um, coupling prongs referred to as rabbit ears. Okay, now let me show you. Here's a Nikon F. This is just a plain Nikon F. Doesn't have a meter. Um, any lens will mount, any Nikon F lens will mount to this camera, whether it's a pre-AI, AI, or AIS, it doesn't matter, and they work perfectly fine on a non-meter Nikon F, okay? On a prism with a meter, the lens needs to be coupled to the meter so the meter would know what aperture was set on the lens. And that is done by means of this coupling prong on the lens. Okay, here's an old version of a 58 millimeter Nikkor lens. And a coupling pin, as you see right here, on the camera. And on the, on the Nikon photo, Photomic, Photomic T, and Photomic TN, you set the lens to f16, mounted it, and it coupled. You can see this piece here moving back and forth, letting the meter know what aperture was set on the lens. And also what you needed to do, once you mounted a lens, you needed to set the ISO, or back then we called it ASA, okay, of the film you had in the camera opposite the maximum aperture of that particular lens. This is a 1.4, so, um, ISO 400 is set opposite 1.4. Um, that went on for several years, and in 1967, Nikon introduced the Nikromat FTN. And the Nikromat FTN introduced a semi-automatic indexing system. Okay, so what you would do, and let's remove this lens here. Okay, you see the coupling pin on the camera? You see the coupling prong on this 105 lens. We're going to set the lens to 5.6. We mount the lens, and then we twist the aperture to its smallest opening, which is 22 in this case, and then back to its widest opening, which is 2.5. And then there is a little window here. You will see, hopefully. And it shows a red dot just before 2.8, indicating 2.5. One year later, in 1968, Nikon introduced the FTN finder for the Nikon F that also had this semi-automatic indexing system. And works the same way. 
Let's remove this lens. Okay, we're going to set it to 5.6. Okay, we're then going to match the black dots on the lens to the black dot on the camera and then twist to minimum to maximum. In this case, it's 2.8. And you will see on the front of the camera a little red marker opposite 2.8 indicating it was set correctly. No longer did you have to play around with the um, ISO setting, setting it opposite the um, maximum aperture of the lens. Okay, so that went on for several years, of, in fact, uh, almost 10 years. And in 1971, of course, the Nikon F2 was introduced, which used the same system. It had a window on the front. You, um, let's dismount this lens. Works the same way, you set the lens to 5.6, mounted it, twisted it back and forth, and again, you had a little window here indicating the, um, the maximum aperture of the lens. And uh, that went on for several more years until 1977. Oh, by the way, um, that semi-indexing that semi system was used on the Nikon F2 with the DP1 finder, which you see here, also the DP2 and the DP3 finders for the F2. So in 1977, Nikon introduced an automatic indexing system, okay, known as AI. Um, you'll see the A on the top of this DP11 finder. The DP11 finder is basically the same as the DP1, uh, except it has the automatic indexing system. Okay? Um, so those lenses are known as AI lenses. Now they still had a coupling prong, as you can see. Here, let me pull up an AI lens. Okay, so here is an AI lens. This is a 105 2.5 AI. Um, one change you'll notice with all the AIs, actually this came in prior to the introduction of the AIs, they have rubber um, uh, focusing rings. Okay, and that actually did come in prior to them going to um, AI and that they were known as K lenses. Okay, so you could see here, um, on an AI lens, we have, let's turn it this way. Yeah, you know, we have our, our aperture ring, but then you also notice, you also have a small, smaller numbers uh, at the bottom of the aperture ring. Um, and that is for what Nikon called the ADR system, aperture direct readout. And that's one way, one of the easiest ways to tell if a lens is AI, if you see that second set of aperture numbers. Um, and the way that ADR system worked was there was an optical system in the finder that uh, read those numbers optically. Okay. Now you also notice that there are a couple little slots cut out, a couple holes in the coupling prong. And that was allow light to pass through to illuminate those um, those smaller aperture numbers, so the ca so you would be able to see them in the viewfinder. Okay, so how did AI work? Okay, there it was a ridge. There is a ridge on the lens that you could see right here. That mated, and let me pull up an AI camera here. That mated with a follower or sometimes called a lever on the meter prism, okay? And that lever is right there. And that ridge, okay, when you mount the lens, connects, connects to that follower, again, indicating to the meter what aperture is set on the lens. We now have two ways, quick ways, to tell if a lens is AI, if it has that second set of numbers, 
if it has cutouts in the coupling prong and also if it has this ridge, which is the most important thing, because that, that ridge is really what makes it AI. Okay, now, um, when Nikon introduced the AI system, there were also a lot of thousands, hundreds of thousands probably, of non-AI lenses uh, in use. So what they did, they offered a program to convert your A your non-AI lens to AI. Basically what you did, you sent the lens back to Nikon. They, it was a nominal charge, I, I believe it was like between 20 and 30 dollars depending on the lens. And they replaced the aperture ring with an AI aperture ring. So this is a lens that was originally non-AI. One of the ways you could tell that it was originally non-AI, it has the metal focusing ring. Okay, but again, some pre-AI lenses did have rubber focusing rings. Um, so all they did was replace the aperture ring. You could see the smaller numbers. You could see the holes in the uh, coupling prong and the ridge. When Nikon converted a non-AI lens to AI by replacing the aperture ring, we refer to these lenses as AI'd lenses. A-I apostrophe D. Okay? And also, some third-party companies converted lenses. Now, they didn't replace the aperture ring. And the one way to tell uh, that it was uh, done by a third party is they use a little sticker here to indicate those smaller aperture numbers for the ADR system. Uh, also, again, they don't replace the aperture ring. They just notch out the existing, uh, the back end of the existing aperture ring. Some of them do a good job. Uh, others do not. So um, just be careful when using one of these AI third party, uh, AI by third party lenses. Um, another thing about these lenses, uh, about non-AI lenses, non-AI lenses cannot be mounted on cameras that accept AI lenses. Okay, so cameras from 1977 on. Uh, you cannot mount a non-AI lens. You will damage that follower. Okay, uh, so, and then you'll end up with an expensive repair. Um, same thing with using non-AI lenses on Nikon DSLRs. Do not mount a non-AI lens, unless it was modified, do not use it on a Nikon DSLR. On the Nikon mirrorless cameras using the F to Z adapter, most non-AI lenses, as well as AI and AIS lenses, will work. All right, the question could, could be asked, why do AI lenses have a coupling prong? It's not needed for AI cameras, any Nikon cameras introduced from 1977 on. Well, the reason for that is so they would work on the older cameras. So Nikon was always very conscious about obsolescence. And so any AI lens with the coupling prong will work on the older cameras, going back to the original Nikon Photomic of 1962. Okay, and of course, they will all work on a plain Nikon F with standard prism finder with no meter. So that went along for a few years, and in 1982, Nikon introduced AIS lenses. Um, AIS lenses look very similar to AI lenses, but you will notice that the minimum aperture is in an amber color. See the F16 here? Also on the ADR numbers, the smaller numbers. And there are a few AI lenses that have amber on the larger minimum aperture number. However, if it does not also, if it's not also amber, on the smaller number, it is not an AIS lens. And another way to tell AIS is they have this cutout here, this scoop in the mount, in the, in the stainless steel mount. Now, what was the purpose of AIS? It was just for a few Nikon cameras, namely at the time the Nikon FA, 
the Nikon FA had um, shutter priority automation, where all previous Nikons had aperture priority automation. Okay, so it was only to gain that um, shutter priority automation. Um, otherwise, they're the same. Okay, so there's really, there may have been a few lenses where they changed optically when they went to AIS, such as the 28 millimeter 2.8, which is a superior lens. The AIS version is a superior to the AI version. Okay, now for use on Nikon DSLRs um, that accept AI lenses, AI lenses work the exact same way. So there's no advantage as far as the connection uh, to an AIS lens. Again, it just a few of them um, had different optical formulas. Now for use on Nikon mirrorless cameras with the F to Z adapter, doesn't matter whether it's AI or AIS or even non-AI for the most part. There are several lenses that will not safely mount on the F to Z adapter and just check the Nikon website for a list of those lenses. But uh, non-AI lenses, and I've used many on the F to Z adapter, will work perfectly fine. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope it answered uh, Robert's question uh, completely. And um, if you have any additional questions, please submit them in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful. So thanks for watching and look for a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. Oh, and one last thing. Don't forget, if you'd like to be entered into that contest to win the Minolta, just look for my video. There's a, there's a um, link in the description below. It's my video on winning a um, camera and lens. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.